Welcome to the last example for chapter 1 for Physics 125. In this example, we have a very similar setup to the jet fuel problem, where we are told about a car and something specific about that car, and then we are asked how long it takes to travel a certain distance. So as with the previous two examples, we have two different number values given to us, which means that only one of them can be our starting point, and the other one will need to be a conversion factor. And just as with the previous example where the rate we are given is a useful conversion factor to make, in this example, the speed our car is going is a useful, useful conversion factor to make. So for example, if we think about driving to Chicago or Detroit, we can tell our friends how long that trip is in miles, but we also typically, even in everyday language, tell them how long it takes us in hours instead. And that's because we know how fast our car tends to go on the highway. And so really what we are doing in that everyday language and in this problem is we are writing out, or we are creating rather, a conversion factor. So we'll write it out here. And that conversion is telling us for the car specifically that we're in on those highways, 70 miles of distance is equivalent to one hour of time. So that conversion factor is specific to this problem. We have seen this happen a couple of times already. And it is specific to this car, no matter how far it is that we're actually going. And so now the actual conversion that we're looking for is the fact that we And so now the actual problem that we're trying to solve is that we have 50 feet of distance and we want to find how long that takes. Now, important here, there are going to be several problems that we see throughout the semester where we ask something phrased, how long does it take? That's always going to mean time. That's how we use it in everyday language but that means we haven't actually specif specified a time unit. If we don't specify a unit, you can use any valid time unit, hours, minutes, seconds, things like that. However, it will always, always be the best choice to pick a time unit that you can do a quick common sense check on. If you think about driving down the highway and traveling 50 feet in your car, that will take on the order of a couple of seconds. It won't take on the order of a couple of minutes. And so if we choose to solve this in terms of seconds, we will be able to do a common sense check. Does this answer make sense? Which will help catch any mistakes that we make. Giving your answer in a tiny fraction of an hour could be a correct answer, but we don't think, as human beings, we don't think about tiny fractions of hours all the time. We know that five seconds has a particular feel that we've got an intuition for. All right, so as with all of our other problems, once we have done the hard work of laying out our map, we use that map to finish the problem. So we start with 50 feet. And we see that we can't go straight from feet to seconds. And what we're going to need to do is get feet to miles and then use our new conversion factor to get into time units that we can then work with. So if we look up our standard set of units, there are 50 to 80 feet in one mile. And then now that we have miles on the top, we can write our conversion factor where in order for the units to cancel, 
We need 70 miles on the bottom, and then we can write one hour on top. And let's make sure we understand why we wrote it the way that we did and not flipped over. So if we change colors, feet cancels because it shows up once on the top and once on the bottom. Miles cancels because it shows up once on the top and once on the bottom. And now we have hours that we can turn into seconds. So one hour is equivalent to 60 minutes. And one minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. So now we can cross out hours because it shows up on the top and the bottom and minutes because it shows up on the top and the bottom. And we decided that we wanted to end with seconds. And so now, because we've looked back at the map that we made for ourselves, we know that we're finished. That's one thing that students who tend to struggle with um, these types of problems, what I try to convey to them the most is that if you are skipping these setup steps and then also feeling confused by these problems or lost, you are making it harder for yourself than it really needs to be. Doing these steps on your paper and not just in your head will not only give you a map of the entire problem before you start working on it, but it will also give you context when you look back at your notes to study from them for any quiz or test in the future. All right, so now that we've gotten to our final unit, we have to multiply everything out. So we've got on the top 50 times 60 times 60. And on the bottom, always, always remember your parentheses. We've got 50 to 80 times 70. All right, so we're going to put this into our calculator. But one thing that will be useful to start to think about in this chapter, because it's a skill we're going to build as we move forward through all of the chapters, is trying to decide what is going to be a reasonable range of values before you just kind of throw numbers into your calculator. You are smarter than your calculator, and by checking to make sure that your answer makes sense, you'll be able to catch any possible mistakes in either setup or just in typing stuff into your calculator. All right, so our calculator gives us 0 0.487, and it goes on, the calculator goes on to say 0, 012987. I really urge you never to write down eight or nine significant figures on your paper. That isn't useful, and it doesn't really actually fit our understanding of significant figures. Certainly, if we were using the rules that we have introduced in lab, because both of our starting numbers have one significant figure, our final answer to fit those rules would have one signif significant figure also. So if you round this to 0.5 seconds, half a second, that would be perfectly reasonable. As I've mentioned a couple of times, and I'll try to keep mentioning, we are going to, in the lecture portion of this course, just default to three significant figures uh, so that we can focus on the physics skills and not worry too much about the lab skills when we have so much new stuff that we are also adding in the lecture portion. So we can do a quick common sense check here. Half a second seems reasonable. If you see a sign coming up that you wanted to read but it passes you by before you finish it, you're 50 feet down the road in a part of a second. That does fit our understanding of driving on a highway. The reason that it's so important to do that last check of does this answer seem reasonable to me whenever we're able to is because it will allow you to fix any common mistakes that you might make. If we forget to put parentheses around the bottom here, our calculator will tell us that it will take our car 2,000 386 seconds to go 50 feet down the road. That's almost 40 minutes of time. I guarantee you I can walk very slowly 50 feet in less than 40 minutes. And so it's a quick check to just be like, oh, that doesn't make any sense. What did I do to my calculator? All right, that is the last full example video for chapter one. 
We've got plenty of other chances to see examples worked out, to try them on our own. Uh, and hopefully this gives you a starting point for the process, which has been the exact same process every time, even when there are new and different sticking points in each of the examples that we present. So I will see you in chapter two. Thanks for listening.